open? Yes? Awesome. You have XAMPP running. Those of you really uh, striving to be a developer, it should just be an automatic process. Anybody on a Windows machine, if you run into this, um, there is a good chance, I need to say this getting clearer and slower so that I can take a clip out of this and just use it. Um, what you want to do is come down here and type in SMC. Uh, let me try services. Oh, it's running now. Awesome. But let me show you uh, for those of you on Windows because you might run into this sometime. He <coughs> said, there we go, thank you. What you're looking for is there is a service that runs uh, in the background of Windows which can block your um, so I disabled mine permanently. Um, it can block your port that localhost runs on, and so it won't let Apache fully start. Right. And so what I mean by block your port is when you go in your browser and you say uh, localhost 120. Right. Um, what happens is it hits your loopback, and it actually essentially hits your NIC card, and then goes right to your localhost. Right. Well, Windows, with that service running, publishing service, it gets all wonkiness. It won't let that Apache start, which is fine. So, uh, it off or what? Do you say I would disable it or whatever? It's up to you. I'm just showing you right the, the problem that I run into. Um, so we get all these running, we're okay. Like, I got all three. Yeah, you're good, man. You're good. All right. From team and local host. Web class one fifteen. All right. class, you should do what we do with the, uh, the inside-out stuff as far as defining it on green, right? Say that again, sir. The homework for the other night was like to define the WordPress inside-out and HTML. Yep. You need to do that for web. Yep. And if you're struggling with that, the videos that have a series of videos I'm putting out now yeah. will help you understand and get. Yeah, I mean, I got all that down to saying do what we're doing today, I'm like, okay, well. Yeah, this is just for, like, when we're, we're talking code in class that we can, right? And you're actually welcome to go fork, <coughs> fork mine. Um, this is the wrong one, Spring. Hang on one second, please. It's the wrong repo. Uh, I need to double check. Yeah, we're just having fun. There it is. So mine is Web 115 class. You can even fork it if you want. So you can actually, what, if you fork, what I mean by fork it, right? Like say we're working in class. Uh, if you have it forked, meaning you have a copy of it or whatever, um, you can request updates and then pull it down in the machine so you're always with class. I'll show you that then at some point if you like. Alright. So, what we're getting into. Um, we're going to do a little bit of refreshing. I'll put dates on this then for you. Uh, I'm more worried about getting the rest of these out for you and then I'll put dates on these. Uh, that. Ooh, that's a good overview. 
And of course, this is set in, in what you're used to in this class. So our big thing, last week we started talking about the DOM, right? Um, oh no, I thought it was good. Last week I started talking about the DOM. Somebody, please, somebody, please, somebody. Anybody? Explain the DOM to me. Page is separated from one item to another. It's the objects are all inside boxes and things. That's that's good, but you left out right the the fundamental details that explain that. You're absolutely right. I, I don't want to take away from what you said. First of all, how do we end up with the DOM? And you're okay. Take take guesses, man, because the assignment's yeah. coming, right? I expect you to really be able to talk about the together on the page. Well, what well, we need to know, right? The DOM. First of all, the DOM is what? Right. And so, in com computing, in computation, right? We like we like to have objects. We like to have things in pieces, correct? Mm -hmm. In some kind of hierarchical, logical order and so that the computer can process these things correctly, right? And so with the DOM, what we're doing with that essentially is we are um, feeding in instructions, which is our HTML, right? We're feeding instructions in to the browser with this file. It's taking this file and it's using those instructions just like a contractor would use a blueprint to build a house, right? And we'll stay on that because what's happening is well, he makes a copy of this blueprint. No, nope, he don't even make a copy. He puts them away when he's done. He, when he's done building it, he puts it away, and now he deals with the house, right? Um, so if you think about it this way, when the first iteration, and we're going to learn about this as we go through, but the first iteration when that HTML file comes into play, right? The first iteration, meaning it feeds the document in, the rendering engine inside of the browser says, oh, okay, cool. I have HTML tag. Oh, I have a head tag. Oh, I got UTF-8. And what it's doing is in the memory of the computer, it's like, hey, create a head tag in the computer. Hey, inside that head tag, put a meta tag uh, for, for uh, character set. Oh, by the way, put a title in there. Oh, by the way, put this in there. Hey, we got a body tag now. All right, put that body tag. Oh, inside the body tag, I want a H1, and then I want you to put this pair. Do you follow what I'm saying? But like, it's literally like the memory is here. The computer memory is here. And if you really think about it, what's happening is, let's just say, okay, that's your RAM, and it's really not exactly like this, I'm just trying to write, make a point here. Um, we have the HTML file, it comes into the browser, okay, comes into the back door of the browser. The browser has actually there's multiple, but there's three primary little programs inside your browser, right? And think about it like this. Word, Microsoft Word, that is not one program. That is a bunch of little programs collectively working together. Same thing with your browser. So the first thing your browser does is it takes that HTML. It's not even really necessarily looking at the CSS or JavaScript at this point. It's looking at the, the tags, right? And it's saying, oh, I need to make these elements. And it's literally building a digital representation of them inside the memory of your computer. Then it loops back and it says, oh, we have some CSS in there. So color my world, right? 
and it starts applying to those little objects that it's made inside your memory blocks, right, the CSS. And it's keeping track of that too. And then it says, oh yeah, cool, we got some JavaScript too. Let's put that over here. Okay, we're done with this. Not that, but let's say that's the HTML document. Like, we're done with that. Set it aside. And when we set it aside, it puts it where? In a temporary folder that we call cache. And that temporary folder could be temporary while you're in a session, meaning while your browser is open, it's a session. Right? We have things called persistent sessions. That means you close your browser, you come back, you're still logged in, right? All the information you left there is still there, right? That's a person. That's because it put that information when it left memory. It had a copy of that information in something we call cache in a temporary folder. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Cookies play into that too. Cookies play into this as well. Right. So cookies, though, are those things that. Um, they're kind of separate, but again, they're memory, right? Everything we do is memory. It's all tucked away in memory, right? Everything is tucked away in memory. So cookies are these things where we have something called key value pairs. Key value pairs are a big part of our life because what key value, key value pairs really are is Brian, I mean, name equals Brian, right? That's a key value pair. And everything that we deal with, essentially, somehow it's just like, right? They have, we have to have a way to identify it. And then, what's its value, right? What's its value? But <coughs> so basically, what you'll learn through these the the part that we're doing is uh, it'll go in, in in deeper depth to what I'm talking about. But I promise you this: if you want everything else that you do in this class, or if you truly want to be a developer, if you truly want to do this kind of stuff, um, web stuff. Understanding the DOM will make learning everything else so much easier. Because if you understand what's going on, you can better understand what you're asking for. Right. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? And I'm telling you, like a dumbass, you know, my first couple of years of doing this, oh, you had a DOM, yeah, it's just uh, how it stores it in the... Uh, well, when I finally took the time to learn the DOM, I'm like, you stupid idiot. Because stuff started making sense to me, right? All of a sudden, I realized that because I was storing, because the, um, the computer was putting this H1 in the memory, I now had access to this H1 that I could tell the browser to do something to it or apply something to it. Right, and it wasn't magical because it's digital, which means it can just slip ones and zeros in there and make it do what I'm asking it to do. And it, you know, it's like anything else, honestly. I mean, um, you know, it's a good idea to understand how elevator buttons work and what they do before you hop in the elevator at the Empire City. Right? I mean, I don't know. Essentially, without knowing the DOM, you might as well just become an airline uh, jet uh, mechanic and say that your primary goal is to obtain a job where you change engines in flight at 35,000 uh, 35, feet at 580 miles an hour. Impossible. Right? So the point is, is learning the DOM is honestly probably one of the most fundamental things that you can do to grasp exactly what it is you're doing and what you're going to learn. You'll see this is all broken up in here. Uh, it's not huge stuff, but some of these videos, and I will go in and clean this up by the way, uh, you are welcome to, I will not put a date on it until it's clean, but you're welcome to go in and start on it, okay? But I won't put a due date. You can start reading ahead and whatever. But I won't put um, a due date on it until I'm satisfied that I've positioned you to succeed with it, which will happen today, tonight, tomorrow. Um, but just this one module, these learning objectives, if you spend a good amount of time on these, 
figuring it right, trying to understand, make sure you're comprehending. I believe I've positioned you with decent videos. Um, I promise you, the rest of the class, it will actually, in my opinion, make it more enjoyable. Because the magic will be gone. Right? You won't be guessing things. You'll, you'll at least have a clue and know how to ask questions for those things that you don't know. You'll have a clue on how to ask those questions. Fair enough? So that'll be meet the Dom, right? You, you're just essentially going over. The next thing we're going to do is go over our, um, you know, learn about our CSS. Um, CSS, honestly, is not rocket science. Additionally, CSS, like um, HTML, is essentially markup. Meaning it's read, it's put into memory, and it's set aside. We don't reuse it. Uh, we kind of do, with CSS3, the cool thing is, it's, it's, it's definitely becoming a programming language, meaning we can actually put like conditions and things like that in there where it actually will get reused or, or something. But essentially, you know, simple CSS is, is really just um, the painters come in. You know what I mean? The painters come into the house. The HTML is the um, shell of the house, um, the plywood against the house, um, and that's it. CSS uh, actually is that part where they come put signing on, they come put shingles on, they start painting things, they make things look nice. JavaScript is the electricians and stuff like that coming in and running, right, because it's always green. You're always going to need electric, you're going to need to turn on and off lights. Well, JavaScript is going to be like that. It basically comes in, gets position, and we use the JavaScript, right, over and over the times. We'll make more sense out of that then. Not sure what's happening there, but that's okay. I'll get that fixed. You can ignore that. I don't want you to do any stupid thing. Just busy work. I don't want you coding there. So we have three. We learned in Web 100. We have three types of CSS, right? What else? Anybody? In lot. That was cheap. Yeah, I had that one up there. In line. I'm kidding. Relax. Relax, Fred is there. In line. Embedded. So, extra, <laughs> right? We have extra. I didn't read that. This rocket fast uh, internet is going on. I'm, I'm actually going to abandon trying to pull this crap up in a minute and move on to uh, just use the highlights and we'll talk about Um, Because it's not pulling up the pages. <coughs> You'll be able to dive into this. Thing. So, let's talk about inline. When we talk about inline, um, we have inline styles. So we come in here. Can anybody identify in here where they might see an inline style? What's that? You would call that an inline style, sir? It's OK. Um, it's an attribute, right? We have attribution inside our HTML elements. One of our attributes is the inline style, correct? This, uh, as we'll learn, what's really cool, right, it was really funny back in the day when I started doing this. I lie to you not, and it's crazy, but it's the truth. Back in the day when I started doing this, we could build an object, right, an element in the DOM, and we would know that Certain pieces of information should be with that element. 
exclusive with that element, and therefore, why should we put it anywhere else but with the element? Why don't we just put it with the element, right? Well, back in the day when the server people, the infrastructure, the operations people, were deciding how we did things, and not the coders and the developers, right? They, um, we would have to play reindeer games with them, and we would have to do things like this. For, let's do it this one. This is not an inline style, by the way, but I just want to show you this. Class equals, right? And we would put, um, let's say we wanted a bunch of pieces of little information about me, right? And we knew that consistently with our PHP, which we'll learn later, we could dynamically draw this, these class names by pulling variable information. And so I wanted that information available in the page so I didn't have to come all the way back to the server to get the information and then take it back over, right? So we would end up doing things like this. First of all, it would be my user ID. Thirty seven. Right there. I'm thirty seven. Thirty seven. Uh okay. Ooh, I haven't been able to take this for twenty years. <laughs> That's kind of exciting. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> It is now, trust me, it's a lot of it. Um, it's amazing on Monday afternoon all these single moms that pull that don't care how you go. They're like, ooh, he's my age and available. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> trust me, as you get older, it gets um, amazing. And what could go wrong? <laughs> right, and what could go wrong? Right. So, what we used to have to do, and this is kind of a side note, I know we're talking about inline styling, but to uh, Brian, you know, kind of look at this, and we see it says data dot, uh, data dash gr dash c dash s dash loaded. We'll be covering that later, right? But what was funny is any information that I wanted to tuck away to have with that element, I had to like do it in a class and then write JavaScript to break it so we would do something, we'll learn how to do this, it would do something called a split and it would make an array, meaning it would go, oh, this number, who split, next array element. Brian, who split, Savage, who split, right? And you wrote your code so that you knew in that array, we would build this array, right? And we know in computers that um, counting starts at zero, right? So the first element in our array is a zero. So you would write your JavaScript to know that zero was always going to be the user's ID and you would write your JavaScript to know that number one was always going to be their first name. So that I could put Hello Brian up there. Right. The beautiful thing is as the developers, as we, and don't get too hung up, we're going to, anything I just said, we'll, we'll get there, baby stuff. But what's really awesome is when the developers finally started having a say in HTML. Um, four was kind of the transitioning point. Five was the, ha, we're doing it our way now, not your server infrastructure operations way, you know, get your Microsoft heads out of my chessboard. Um, we added what's called a data attribute. And so what's really cool is any information we want to tuck in here, now instead of putting, you know, this, and yes, uh, there's other ways to do this too, by the way, better ways to do this, but sometimes the better way isn't always the way to do it. But now I can do things like, like this. And this is exciting, trust me. Maybe not to you, but to me. And we'll just say F name. Do you get the point or do I need to keep going for anybody? And that's okay if I do. And nobody say a damn word to them if they do. Nope. Alright, good. Okay. You're not you don't have to create an array somewhere else. Well, and to be honest with you, as we learn about objects in JavaScript and how to build an object, honestly our best 
thing to do is build a JavaScript object. Right. But for now, what's really cool is because of this data attribute, these are attributes, correct, that are inside an element, yep. We can just by saying data dash, and then whatever comes after that with JavaScript, we can talk to the browser and say, hey, we're looking for the data element, user ID, and give it to me. First name, give it to me. And we can, we can break up our information without having to run a bunch of additional, right, like create an array out of this and do that and so on and so forth. So it's a beautiful thing. And we're, we're going to be learning how to do this. Now, back on point, I know I'm really good at pulling off a point, aren't I? I heard that. Shut up. Um, style. Um, So, color is the color of the fonts on the page, correct? I have an inline style on my body, on my body of red, right? An inline style is specifically on an element. An inline style will always trump other styles with exception to, as we learn how to use uh, exclamation point important. And we'll get, don't worry about that too much right now. Um, styles themselves, wherever they are assigned, right, whatever is nested in there, will, it'll trickle down unless it's given another assignment. Does that make sense? And if it doesn't, Let's, let's look at it real quick just in case. So I'll go in and I'll edit my HTML. I'll pull this style out and actually let's go with green so you can see it a little better, I think. Maybe not. That's it. Right. We know that if I take this and I edit this HTML, I take that out, we go back to white. The reason that it's picking up white and as we become more comfortable with our tools down here, it makes even more sense. But the reason that it's picking up white, where is it getting white from? Default text. Nope. Sorry, thank you, the default is usually normally black that I see changing. Where is it getting the white from? From a style sheet. From, thank you. Yes. Yeah, How do you know that? Uh, well, the title's down there, it says style.css, and then it's got the body attribute. Right there, right? Absolutely, yes. So, the nice thing is, is we can see where our styles are coming in from, right? We can actually see where we're picking them up. And because it's assigned to the body, it means it's the same as right, assigning it here, which means everything is inside the body, which means everything, until told differently, is going to be the color white, correct? Again, if I come in here and I sign it here, right, an inline style overrules everything else. Does that make sense? If I come down here and I say edit in HTML, and I go on my H1 and I say color green, what's going to happen to all the text? Anybody? What's going to happen to all the text? Is it all going to go green? What's that? Only H1. Why? You're right. Don't let me make you question yourself. And? Why? Because nothing else is inside that H1. So we're explicitly pointing 
we're, we're, we're not even pointing. We're going to the H1 and we're saying, you're green. Period. The only way, and I'm just going to throw this in, and you'll get it in a little while. The only way that I can really reassign that color green at this point, and this is where CSS, holy crap, can you end up with a mess, right? Because you, you can assign multiple ways, and, you know, we can play it, you know, we can pretty much know, oh, if I change it in a style sheet, and it doesn't change, there's a good chance it's embedded, and if it's not embedded, there's a good chance it's in line. That's the hierarchy we go through in our head with CSS, correct? But where it becomes crazy, and you'll hear different perspectives on this, but I promise you after leading teams for almost 20 years, you only do this when it's absolutely necessary. When is it absolutely necessary? Very rare cases in development. When it's abs absolutely necessary, this is Sony's website. Okay, it's Friday, 3.30. I'm getting ready to shut my computer down. I'm headed to Fox and Hound to have a couple of drinks. Right? To see Kurt playing. Kurt and Jason. James. Jason. Jeff. Thank you. Who are awesome to go see, by the way. Um, the client calls and they're like, Oh my God. We, that's unacceptable. The CEO is on the phone. He's in Paris. And he said he's not hanging the phone up until this is back to white, though, the text is back to white. We have 38 freaking style sheets going on. Crap's being dynamically, right, you know, created all over the place. Um, but you do know that the first thing you're going to try to do is go to that style sheet. And if you're lucky, or not. I'm not saying that you're insisting that that overwrites any inline or embedded thing because you're saying no, everything in the body is white no matter what. Yep. So. Yeah, I'm, you're trumping that whole thing. Right. But unfortunately, because it's assigned at the H1, <coughs> and we're saying it's important at the body, it's saying, I really care. I'm not going to change it at the H1. So, what you do. And you never tell anybody when you're the boss. You know, I'm telling you this. <laughs> and you'd be like, tell your employees, like, you know what? Screwed the pooch. Totally did the wrong thing. I needed to go drinking. You know, like, it don't work that way. But honestly, sometimes you need to get the hell out of there. And finding what's going on with style can be crazy. What I can do is I can come in here and I can say, H1, color. Screw that up, handle. H1, color, important. And so by putting the important on, what you're doing with important, right, so you have this hierarchy of styles. And it starts with, right, it, it basically will work from the bottom up. Let's do it that way. You have this set of rules where inline trumps anything above. If there's nothing in line, but there's something embedded in the document, right? Then it comes after a style sheet. So in other words, if I change it embedded, and I'm holding the style sheet here, and the style sheet address H1 thing is what? Does that make sense? What I just said? It's kind of, because CSS, man, that's the hardest part of CSS is figuring out where to help things go, right? This is one of the biggest reasons we want to keep it in a style sheet, right? Is so it's global, and also so we know where our styles are coming from. The way that we place our CSS inside a document will play the way of what wins. Because it has really nothing to do with, oh, it's embedded, oh, it's um, external, oh, it's in line. What it has to do with is, oh, that's the last instruction the browser read about applying a style to another. Is that? So you'll read things, you'll hear things even on the assignment and whatever, 
and it'll say, well, you know, this will play over that and this will play. No, what they're doing is sharing theory with you, logic with you, um, how you should be doing it as a developer. And the bigger the team you're on, the more you should treat it that way. You should stick to it. And honestly, I would never pass the code review to have that in. So code review, right? You're done your your work and you submit it to the repo and you do a pull request, right? Like, hey, my code's ready to go into the main branch. Um, the senior developer or someone will go and they'll look at your, your code and I'll be honest with you. My first scan, when I would do a code review, my first scan, I wouldn't have gotten past this long. I would have shot it right back at you. Get that the hell out of there. Why? Because on Friday when I want to go get drinks and Sony calls, I don't want to be competing with that. What important does for us is we have this hierarchy, right, of how the styles get assigned. What important does, and you almost have to flip it up so yeah, right? What important does is say, nope, I get last set by putting important. So it, it, it wants, what, what the browser is really doing is taking these styles and putting them up in memory, right? And as it's reading through all these different sheets and embedded and in line and whatever, it's going down through and it's creating this and then it's keeping this list over here called, it, not really, but it's keeping this important list over here saying every time it, it applies a style, it's like, oh, no, that's, no, we don't need that, right? We can't change it because that's important. But if, if everything was perfect, if they wanted one thing, <coughs> one line, one word change a different color, would you do a class for that in the system style sheet? Or would you do a line like that? Well, in a real world, honestly, usually your body tag If you're a good developer, there's a good chance what you're going to do is have a class in your body and you're going to say main, let's just say it's main body and that's my class set. So again, just another thing to really pay attention to, right? <coughs> it, it's what I'm showing you right now. So hang on, let me do something else here. Now I get the call. But the problem is, is we're using style sheets, which means it's global, correct? Which means the problem probably persists across pages we're hoping, because that's when it starts to run to <laughs> if it doesn't. But they call and they're like, hey, we said Hey, we said that the slogan, which I have not backwards by the way, if you notice that word primary slogan is just good. Um, we said to just do it must be in a certain font, and we said that all the main slogan, the here I go again, should actually be smaller. And you need to fix this right now. So you said to me, would you just go in and do a class, right? No. Hopefully, if we're coding well, we don't have to assign a class. We don't want to assign a class because we can really wonkify everything, change. right? But what we can do is attack a class. And so this is where a Friday scenario, a Thursday at 10 o'clock in the morning would be go figure it out, right? Like go find where the assignment's being done and get it done, right? 
a Friday scenario, which could happen Thursday morning because you just want to shut the CEO up while you're going to look and resolve the problem correctly, right? But a Friday scenario would be, oh. I'm going to go after the H2 second slogan because there might be an H3 that has second slogan or you, you follow what I'm saying? I'm going to go after the H2 second slogan which is just do it. I'm going to go after a font family of just do something right? fantasy Right? I'm going to, uh, they said the here I go again, they went smaller in a different color, right? So, you notice how when I click on it and I add it, it's saying H2 dot main slogan. So it's literally identifying the element and the class. It's more, it's more direct, if that makes sense. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, I could come up and say, I could actually put in here, if I wanted to be really safe and make sure I'm not screwing something else up somewhere else, main dot main body space h2 main slogan color blue font size 20% If you notice percentages, what is that? We'll get into EMs and stuff like that. Then. I put EM. You always start to appreciate these things, don't worry. There's a rhyming or reason for everything. Let me in. Yeah. 10 EM. 2. So when you're coding, you want to have to think ahead, like, oh, I'm going to safeguard this in case I have to change this later. Thinking ahead, like, this, they might want to, in case they might want to the last minute change in this, I'll just code it in, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have a good team, you have a good project manager, and you have good senior developers, the first thing is you walk into an organization, a coding organization, and there's already standards that you must follow. Right? There's a way that they do things. And whether you agree with them or not, you don't really know. It does to a degree, because if you're smart, right, like if one of my developers came to me and said, hey, I think there's a better way to do this, you listen. Why? Because every six months, things change, man, and, and there ends up being better ways, you know? Um, and there's nothing worse than getting on a website that you know, as it's loading or doing something, your cursor's going because it's processing that, right? And so, you encourage that. While encouraging that, though, you make it very clear with, with penalty, this is how we do that. If you don't like it, that's awesome. I don't want you to like it because if you just sit back and like it, we are not improving as we move for that, right? But if you decide you're going to cow we call it cowboy it, if you cowboy it, you better send an email to some of these other things that I don't want you on that team. Why? Because this Friday, what, three people sitting there trying to figure out what's going on because you chose to do something different. Right? So to you know, you as you evolve in a a project, you identify the way you're going to do things and do them as consistently as you can because you can do them a million different ways and they will all work. But if you're like, right, like, oh, today I feel like doing it like this, tomorrow I feel like doing it like that, and then you get that call on Friday, you better just call home and let them know you'll be home tomorrow morning because it, it becomes complicated. It becomes very complicated. Um, and, and when we learn JavaScript, when it becomes complicated, yes, there is a, a way to get to the bar stroke, <laughs> right? Because we'll just use JavaScript and get it and then take it through Monday morning. Um, but there's always a way. But to what you just said, 
uh, per, um, it's really, really important to identify and establish how you're going to write your code. And it needs to be communicated constantly out to people. Because that's when you end up, well, oh, when I left and went to Godiva, PetSmart was halfway through. Lou had PetSmart, Lou, the graphics community you work with. Lou had PetSmart. Lou and I subscribed to the same process and right, we, yeah, it's one of the reasons we're such good friends is we figure the more pricks we are and the more we love our people, the greater we all are, right? The stronger we are, the more efficient, the better we go. Well, Lou had left um, eBay while I was at Godiva. And the big thing that drove Godiva to bring me back, uh, they wanted to bring me back, is that um, they accumulated a, 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 an astonishing 490 bug defect, defect tickets in the development process because the person they could love when Lou left did exactly what we are talking about. I don't care, get it done. Do what you gotta do. Do it the way you need to do it, don't care. Well, next thing, everything's all out of whack. And there's no rhyme or reason to the way things are. You know what I mean? And it's a perfect example of you, your coders need to be, the number one thing that your, your senior developers, when they're doing code reviews, looking for is consistency. They're writing scripts because they get tired of it. They're writing scripts to check your elements. They're actually writing scripts to check your HTML to make sure, right, there's consistency. Does the body tag, you know, um, does the body tag have, uh, you know, the class uh, pet, pet main? Because you're always going to want to attack the body tag with, right, with pet main. What a problem, you, you don't want to just rely on the element itself, because if you rely on the element itself, Right? And then PetSmart comes along and says, hey, we want the special little section. Well, if you're going after the body tag, and this special little section has, you know, they're doing, uh, what was it, blue color or blue, whatever. Um, they dumped a lot of money into PetSmart's website. This one dog food, blue something. I can't remember. Anyway, but when you pulled up that piece, like the background color was different, this and that, and blah, blah, blah. Well, if you wrote your CSS, did you get, just go after body? And you change it to blue, now your whole pet smart site is right. So you need to think ahead. You need to literally, what you do is you sit down with your senior developers. Well, somewhere like eBay, it's already established. It's already in document, right? Hey, body tag will always have the class main dash client name. And actually, not client name. Main, main dash client number, right? Account number. So our inlines, we understand that we have inline styles. We understand that we have embedded, right? Embedded would be essentially where we would come in here. We would say edit is HTML. Um, we'll come to the bottom of the head. Look at that. They wrong with Chrome. Should have never happened. It actually sucked the head into there, right? <coughs> um, and now if I say, um, if I say H1, Why is that not applying? What? Oh, you have to import it. What's going on here? If it makes you feel any better, I'm, I'm not going to sit up here and act like Mr. Know It All. I'm trying to figure it out myself. Like, where is it, <laughs> right? where is it coming from? What's, what exactly is happening um, that's overriding that? We can see all these down here in, in the light gray. These, 
are ones that we um, are assigned by the browser. The user agent style sheet, meaning our browser style sheet. Um, I'm trying to see here, so if I lift that, I do get the yellow, right? But the question is, is where is that bad boy coming from? And if nothing else, I've just demonstrated how difficult it, this is a simple little document, right? Where is it coming from? Well, in this, we're in our inspector, so it's actually keeping this this um, cache of what I'm doing inside here, and it's treating it like a style sheet that's overwrite. Does that make sense? So if I come up here, theoretically, if I'm not full of shit, I should be able to come in here and say, important and I can overwrite. Why? Because all of a sudden the browser said, oh, important, right? Stays here. Unless unless I go down there and put important on that, it, it won't work. But remember, all important does is double the the process. So we can go in there and put important on everything and end up with the same thing that we have without important on things. Because it all rightfully overrides. This is the stuff that'll get a little nutty on you, right? Um, but don't go, don't get overwhelmed by it. Don't, right? It's um, honestly, I love that it gets overwhelming on you, because when it gets overwhelming on you, what that means is simply you are going to do your best to conform to some kind of standard, because when you do that standard and your code grows from a couple lines to a couple thousand lines, you're confident you know what's going on. Additionally, there are times where, see how we have main head, this, that, and that, right? So, and I'm not trying to confuse you, I'm just trying to make a point here, right? One of the cool parts that you'll, you'll <coughs> do too, because here's another thing, man. You don't want to jam up tons and tons of code You don't want to jam up tons and tons of code in your page because again, it will look complicated. So what we can do is we can start to do things where we know every page is going to have a header. That header is going to be consistent, right? We make a class and call it prime header. We know we know that our header, so our header is that piece of the website that always stays up top, always right, is always there and uh, uh, consistent from page to page to page to page, unless we end up in a right uh, scenario like the PetSmart one I shared with you. Well. And you can be explicit at this point because I'm saying primary header. So now if PetSmart came along and said I want a special site, I would actually name secondary header or blue header, right, for blue collar, I think it's called blue or whatever. But what's cool is I know that our header is always going to have one H1. I know all of our pages are only going to have one H1 because they're going to be rejected if they don't. Why? Oh, I can have many. For the SEO, I only want one, right? I know that I'm always going to have my slogan in here. So I don't really need to identify it because I know my slogan is going to be an H2. And then I know I'm going to have a little paragraph there. So now, if I come out, I know I'm picking up my H1, my color from up here, correct? I know that's all happening for for that. What's really cool, well, let's do this as an example. Is 
So we want one each one. We got that. Come down here, outside of my header. Now we're starting to get into, what are these elements referred to that I'm getting into now? Anybody? Anybody know? No? So we got main. We're going to close off main. Does semantics ring a bell for anybody? Again, one of these things, when we finally got the server guys out of making decisions about how we code, we could finally stop using freaking divs, you know, and do it, right? Like, why can't we, every web, oh, almost every website worth its salt, you know, has a div in there with the class header. They have a div in there with the class main. They have a, a, a div in there with the class footer. But now we have to fight with CSS on divs and then go after our class, like, Holy crap, can't we just create a, a header element and a footer element and a main element? Like, you know, like, what is wrong with these people? You don't want server people uh, up in your code, man. Trust me. So now, what's really cool is now we're in this world where we have this thing called a header, we have a main area, and we have a footer, which is how we'll be building our web app. Right? And all this stuff, remember, all this stuff is tucked away into the, the memory of the computer. Right? It's not permanent anywhere. But what's really cool about this now is we can come into our styles, and I'll do it in here, um, although we'd want to do it in a style sheet, right? Um, and honestly, here's how I'll do it. And this is how I actually do my styling, right? so that you're, you're aware of this. And you're more than welcome to take this approach. First thing, we know we want main, right? That's where our content for our website is. Uh, if I come out here and I say, all right, cool, I want all my paragraphs a little bit bigger. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just attack my paragraphs. And I'm going to say um, font size uh, 1 em maybe. <coughs> Bless you. 2 EM. Are you starting to see why I like to do my coding right in here? Right? So I'm going to set all my font sizes. Bless you. Now that's enough. <laughs> right? I'm going to set all my font sizes to 2 EM. And by the way, I want my main content, the, the paragraphs, I want them to um, uh, uh, be in a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and put padding right and I'm going to say 30 px and I got nothing which means I might be getting overridden by something correct yeah. so I'll go ahead and try important oh no Brian is dumb sometimes I'm not really dumb but I have my lines I wanted to put that on the left there we go so I've just bought my my peas in but now I have a problem. I bumped the PN everywhere. So what's nice about these semantic elements and knowing, right, that I'm going after a header is I can either use the class, which is the, the best way, but let's just go ahead and start really like trying to understand CSS, how we can apply it to the tree. So I could literally say, oh, no, 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 no. Well, I don't want that in the header and the footer. I want it in main. Notice how everything in the header and the footer bump back because all I'm doing with the CSS is I'm saying, hey, go to the main element and anything inside the main element that's a P, I want you to apply these styles to. Right? And then, I'll just take this up here real quick. I want it to stay. I'll put that in there and I'll be sloppy and not clean my code up because it should clean it up for me. So at this point, I've just taken that style, these P's up there. When I click on it, I can see 
that it's coming from somewhere, and I can see that I have it down here too. And so I could get rid of it down here if I wanted to, but what I want to do now is I want to go after my header, the P's in my header, and what I want to do with them is I want to make them 3EM, I want them to have a color of whatever, Are you starting to follow what I'm trying to show you, which is you can, right, you can, it, it's honestly, it's not complicated. You look at your elements and you prescribe style to them with hierarchy, understanding nested, right, what's nested and what's not nested. And you try to, you try to apply at the highest level. And you'll start to understand exactly what I mean as we go through. Because the higher you go, the broader the scope, you're achieving what you're trying to achieve. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But we'll work on that to cover more ground if you do that too. Yes, sir. So before, I just want to touch on something real quick. Um, pay attention to the basic inlines. Again, note, when you see a due date, that means I've gone through it and I feel it's good enough for you to get confused by, <laughs> right? Um, but if you want to work ahead, you're welcome to. Just don't get your panties in a bunch of something, you know, uh, changes a little because I, I will tweak these a little bit. I'm going to work on getting these out first to you. So you start slowly stepping through these. They'll uh, come up through here, I think, up through nine, zero, zero, 009. And don't get overwhelmed because, uh, you know, like one of them is just, three action items, which is log into Agri Servicing, go to your subdomain folder, right click on it, um, set APP password. But what, hopefully what it does for you is anybody who's getting confused, it takes it in a slower click um, and more prescribed and more detailed. As you're going through uh, the CSS stuff, if, you know, hopefully you get through some of it, uh, colors, three ways that will assign cover colors and several ways that will assign colors. We talk about selectors. Selectors are those things where we said head, blah, blah, right? Any questions? How many of you are confused? Can I ask a question yep. about something else? Yep. This error, Dreamweaver could not locate the gate client on my computer. That error that we had, you got it too. It said install Git and relaunch Dreamweaver to enable Git feature. I yep. tried everything possible to try to get this to work. Are you coming to tonight? Yeah, we'll, yeah. All right. we'll, we'll have, have the answer for you then after he's done. All right. Yeah. You're welcome to come to the window. So 115 is where um, I do break a cup. Uh, not really. I mean, they're aware of it. They just want to turn their head and pretend it's not happening. I do welcome people. I uh, have evenings where I open my door. Uh, you have to come to me. I'm not coming to you. Um, let me let me grab all this real quick before. Um, I do welcome people to get extra help that are really, really trying and want to learn and whatever, uh, just don't waste my time if you're not serious about learning. Um, it's not a hangout thing, but I do welcome people to come and learn uh, with me uh, at my house. Um, Turtle, I'll tell you, I, I, you've been there. No? Not yet. Uh, um, you know, I have a certain area that's set up and I, I kind of keep it so that I can't get in trouble or whatever and make sure, like, if, if, if a female comes, I make sure there's multiple people there, you know, one recording, one videoing, just to make sure I don't end up in jail. Um, <laughs> it's the world we live in. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. It's unfortunate, but that it's the world we live in. So, anyway, that's open to you. All you have to do is reach out to me and ask. Um, this evening, Kurt, Kurt's coming over. Um, so if anybody's interested and needs extra help, you're more than welcome to um, reach out and ask. Yeah. Usually the more, the better, because uh, 